Hi, I'm Frankie. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can get started using webhooks in Azure API Management. This series is based on the Azure API Management hands-on lab. If you want to follow along or do it on your own, you can find a link to it in the description. Before I show you a demo using webhooks in Azure API Management, let's talk about what webhooks are and why they're beneficial. Imagine I have a bakery business where I may want to inform customers about the new bread, cookies, and brownies that I have. They'll have to give me their information for me to let them know about these things. So I might get a phone number, I might get an email, and I might get a street address. And I can inform these different potential customers about my bread, cookies, and brownies if they give me these things. When a potential customer shares this information, they're essentially hooking themselves into the notification stream that is this bakery that is sharing information to these potential customers. Similarly, we could have an APIM instance, we could have a backend service or third party service that's sharing information to any webhook that it's given. There could be different kinds of URLs that are all given to this service as a hook into the notification updates, events, and data that's sent. So when we think about a webhook, it's really just a URL that is being given to some other type of programmatic service so that that programmatic service can send information directly to the webhook. In this way, the webhook hooks into the way in which they can receive information, hence the term webhook. Webhooks are helpful for several reasons. Asynchronous or one-way requests are helpful when you don't need a response back and you don't want a user waiting for a response over a long period of time. You might have third-party or first-party integrations that you want to set up. You might have push notifications that you want to receive or send out. Automation solutions, logging, and monitoring are also helpful use cases for webhooks. Now let's use a webhook in Azure API Management. The way we'll set this up is that we'll have an API consumer send a request to the API Gateway. The API Gateway will forward that request to the backend service. Then the backend service will send the response back to the Gateway, and if the Gateway checks the response and sees that it looks okay, then we'll use a send one-way policy to send a request to that webhook. After that, we'll send the standard response that we got back from our backend service back to the API consumer. We'll take a look at the trace logs to see that the webhook request was sent using the send one-way policy. We'll use this free online webhook.site to get us a webhook that we can use for testing. We'll use this XML code to add our send one-way policy to our API operation. This is based on code from the Azure API Management Hands-On Lab, and I'll add a link to this GitHub gist in the description. In the Azure portal, I'll navigate to the API section and the APIs page. I'll go to the basic calculator API. I'll go to the add to integers operation, and I'll go to the policies to make changes. Close this and expand this to make it a little bit more easy to see. Now coming down to the outbound, after this set header policy, let's add in our code from GitHub. Copy this, put this in here, and then I'll change my URL to be the webhook.site URL. Copy this to my clipboard, and add this in. Now I'll save this. I get this warning because in my set body code, I have two at symbols and Azure API management wants to make sure that I'm not trying to create policies or expressions using those. The reasons those are there is because this is the format for sending a message card to a Microsoft Teams channel. I'll save this. And now we'll test this. I'll add a value here and a value here, and we'll hit trace in order to look at all of the execution on the policies. I'll come down to trace. I'll go to outbound, and we can see some of these other policies that executed. And then we see this set body policy 
you see my send one-way request policy and it looks like it was successfully sent to our webhook. Let's take a look at that at webhook.site and we see it here. So it was successful. If you want the message card data that we sent to go to an actual Microsoft Teams channel, here's a link to the documentation that I'll put in the description that talks to you about how you can create in Microsoft Teams channels a webhook so that the information can then be sent to that channel. You'll get a URL from this by creating the webhook, and then you'll simply add that webhook as your set URL for this message card. This should help you get started using webhooks in Azure API management. If this video was helpful for you, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And if you missed any of the past Azure API management videos I've put together, you can find some of those here. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.